Welcome to another message from the book of Zechariah, the parables of the Bible, parables of the Bible. We're in the 14th chapter of Zechariah. We're talking about end time war, end time war now. Behold, a day is coming for the Lord when the spoil taken from you will be divided among you. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. And the city will be captured, and the houses plundered, and the women ravished, and half the city exiled. But the rest of the people will not be cut off from the city. This is talking about a time to come, a prelude to Armageddon. Prelude to Armageddon. Armageddon. Armageddon is what it is. It means the mountain of slaughter. The mountain of slaughter. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as when he fights on the day of battle. Now we're talking about some super, this is a supernatural battle. This is no longer uh, something like we see uh, with battlefields because the whole terrain is going to change. God is going to change the terrain of this battle. The battlefield God is going to create. The battlefield is going to be 200 miles long. 200 miles long. This battle field does not exist in the world today, yet we know that right on top of the Mount of Olives that there is a fault, an earthquake fault, that it will split just exactly like the Bible says and it will go 200 miles long. The, the, it, now it's not there. But it's just like up here at Mammoth. They know that Mammoth is going to blow its top one of these days. Down there in the Bakersfield area, they know that the San Andreas Fault is going to split and, and cause another great big earthquake one of these days. We, the earth sets on tectonic plates that rub together, and that's the earthquake. The, earth is, the center of the earth is molten magma. Molten magma. And the earth is just like a crust on the egg of a shell. And it shifts, and we have all the shaking going on. Now it says here that uh, this is we talked about the 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 Antichrist when he shows up in the middle of the tribulation period. That he's going to say that he is God, and then Israel will flee. The Bible's now God is going to put Israel. He's going to whip Israel into line. I've said this several different times. I do not believe in replacement theology. Israel is Israel and the church is the church. All the promises of Israel don't go to the church because of two covenants in the Bible, unconditional covenants, and those two unconditional covenants are the Davidic covenant and the Abrahamic covenant. And it promises that there will be a king on the throne. And this king will be on the throne for 1,000 years. But Israel will be administrator of God's kingdom on earth. The church is already taken up here at the beginning of the tribulation, just prior to the tribulation period. We know that we're leading up to that type of thing right now. The Bible talks about eight empires. Eight empires. And those empires, the eight empires, seven of them have already gone. The Bible says the seventh empire will be revived. The seventh empire to rule the land of Palestine was the Ottoman Empire. And the Bible says that that same empire will be revised. The deadly wound will be healed. Islam says that they are looking forward to time when their Mahdi will come forth. That Mahdi will be an absolute direct descendant of Muhammad. He will have the spirit of Muhammad reincarnated in him. He'll be 40 years old when he begins to reign as a reluctant ruler. He will uh, bring in his, the, the final caliph. He will go out forth to kill all the pigs, kill all the Jews, kill all the Christians, and bring the world unto the one great caliphate the caliphate a peace they say his helper will be the beast and his helper will also be Issa the false Christ of Islam we see all of this is going to happen much of it has come to pass 
Israel is back in the land. They don't have Jerusalem. They have Jerusalem, but they don't have Jerusalem. They never sought to take the city of Jerusalem because it would have been a total tremendous war. Because one of the sacred holy sites of Islam is the mosque, the temple mosque, the mosque of the rock in Jerusalem. That is a shrine, that is a testimony that Islam will rise. On the inside of that mosque, all the way around, it says, there is no God but Allah, he has no companion, no Jesus, no son, and Muhammad is a prophet. And it tells in there that Jesus is not the son of God. We had here just a couple of lessons ago where it said that the Lord, the shepherd, in verse number 7 of the 13th chapter, said, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, against my man, my associate. Islam's confession of faith says there is no God but Allah. He has no companion. He has no associate. And Muhammad is his prophet. That was in direct opposition to the word of God right here. Direct opposition to the word of God. Now I'll believe the Bible any time. The Islamic people always say the Bible is corrupted. Yes, the Bible is corrupted. I admit the Bible is corrupted. It's called a Quran. That is the most cobbled up quotations of some scriptures. If you read The Life of Muhammad by Ibn Ishik, you'll have to get it from the Oxford Press. It is a pro-Islamic book. You'll see how those scriptures came down and why they came down. And you can read the Quran. It'll be going off and the sky is blue and God gives rain and Jesus is not the Son of God. Totally out of context. Trying to emphasize Jesus is not the God, Son of God, the God, God the Son or the Son of God. Allah, there is no God but Allah and he has no companion. He has no son. It says here, the houses will be plundered and women ravished and half the city exiled, but the rest of the people will not cut off from the city. This happens probably right in the middle of the tribulation period when the Lord told them to flee, when they see the abomination desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, stand in the holy place saying that he is God. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as when he fights on the day of battle. And on that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives. Now if you go in the first chapter of the book of Acts, you'll see that Jesus took off from the Mount of Olives, and then there were two angels standing there to testify of that, and they said, Why, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing? He said, The Son of God will come back in the same way that you see him go. And this is what it's talking about. Now he comes back in his secret coming or his rapture coming or whatever right here. At the, at, right at the beginning, end of the church age, beginning of the tribulation period. Zip! The rapture. First Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. He raptures the church. He raptures all the saved. And then hell breaks loose on earth. That which withholds or withholds us, that it says in King James, when it's taken away, all hell breaks loose on earth. In that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which is in front of Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives will be split in the middle from the east to the west, a very large valley, so that the ba- half of the mountain will be moved toward the north, and the other toward the south. And you will flee by the valley of the mountains. For the valley of the mountains will reach to Aziel. That's down by Petra. Yes, you will flee just as you fled before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Then the Lord my God will come. And all holy ones with him. Revelation 12, 1 through 6. Revelation 12, 1 through 6. Let's go there quickly. Revelation 12, 1 through 6. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. And with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. Now that we know this is Israel. And she was with child, and she cried out, being in labor and pain to give birth. And another sign 
appeared in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads were seven diadems. And his tail swept away a third of the stars of heaven. That's, that's Satan. That's Lucifer. And threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she gave birth he might devour her child. And we know this happened. Herod was on the throne. The wise men, the magi, came to Jerusalem looking for the king of Israel, and they asked him, and he said, Oh, get the, get the scribes, get the priests, and let's find out where the Messiah is supposed to be born. They knew the Messiah was born. These magi were students of Daniel, descendants of that school. These magi, by the way, they were magistrates, they were kings. And they came there, we want to worship the king. Because it's time for him to be born. Time for the king to be born. The stars have lined up. And so they looked and said, well, in Bethlehem, Judea. That's where he's going to be born. And so they go, and Herod says, go and find him. And when you find him, come and tell me, because I want to go worship him. And then he sent soldiers to go over there and kill every child two years old and under. That's where they had the slaughter of the innocents. Mm -hmm. And she gave birth to a son, a male child, who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And a woman fled into the wilderness. Now this is what it's talking about here. Zechariah 14, 4 and 5. Where she had a place prepared her by God so that she might be nourished there 1,260 days. In other words, three and one half years. That's the last part of this tribulation period right here. This is for, I believe, Islam goes after her. You can go on down here and read more. Talk about the war in heaven. Let's go back to the book of Zechariah now. And I will come about in that day that there will be no light and the luminaries will dwindle. For it will be a unique day which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night, but it will come about at evening time there will be light. It will come about in the day that, that living waters will flow out of Jerusalem. This is talking about during the millennium. And the land's going to be healed. Half toward the eastern sea and the other half toward the western sea. And it will be a summer as well as winter. And the Lord will be king over all the earth in that day, and the Lord will be the only one, <clears throat> and his name the only one. There will no more be blasphemy in the land but false religions. There will be no more blasphemy about Jesus not being the Son of God. There will be no more blasphemy from the Jews and spit when they speak the name of Jesus. I've heard, I've talked to many Jews in my life the Jews that will make it alive to hear two-thirds of them are going to be killed, but the last third of them, each one of them is going to make a confession of faith, believing that Jesus is God the Son, and he is Hamashiach, the Messiah, King of Israel, prophet, priest, and king, and they will repent of their sins and repent of what their grandfathers and, not, and their, dis, their ancestors have done to the Messiah. You will flee by the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains will reach to Hazel. Yes, you will flee just as you fled before the earthquake in the days of Isaiah, the king of Judah. And then the Lord my God will come and the holy ones with him, and it will come about that there will be no more night, and the luminaries will dwindle. Less is when the Lord shines from heaven. This is New Jerusalem. There will be a unique day which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night. It will come at the evening, there will be light. It will come about, and the living waters will flow out of Jerusalem half toward the eastern sea and the other half toward the western sea. And it will be in summer as well in winter and the Lord will be king over all earth and that day the Lord will be only one and his name the only one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is a hot one. There is no other God. The whole earth will see the Lord God of heaven. His majesty. Verse number 10. And the land will be changed to the plain from Geba to Ramon south of Jerusalem, but Jerusalem will rise and remain on its site from Benjamin's gate as far as the place of the first gate to the corner gate and from the tower of Hanel to the king's wine presses and the people will live in it and there will be no more curse for Jerusalem will dwell in security. 
Now this will be the plague which the Lord will strike all the peoples who have gone to war against Jerusalem. Their flesh will rot while they stand on their feet and their eyes will rot in their sockets. Sounds like old Willie Nelson and, and uh, the red-headed stranger. And their tongue will rot in their mouth. And it will come about in that day a great panic from the Lord will fall upon them and they will seize one another's hand and the hand of one will be lifted against another. And Judah also will fight at Jerusalem and the wealth of all the surrounding nations will be gathered gold and silver and garments in great abundance. So also this plague will be a plague on the horse and the mule and the camel and the donkey and the cattle that will be in those camps. Forced worship. This is what we call the only time that the state and the church is going to be lined up together successfully from verse 16 on. Then it will come about that one who are left and all the nations that went against Jerusalem will go up from year to year to worship the king, Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, and to celebrate the Feast of Booths. This is the Feast of Tabernacles. And it will be about whichever of the families of the earth does not go up to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, Jehovah Sabaoth, there will be no rain on them. God is going to make these people. For 1,000 years, Israel will be, the, will be the administrator of God's kingdom on earth. And Israel will lead out. And many people believe that David, the resurrected David, will sit on his throne in Jerusalem. And of course, the Lord God of heaven, Jesus, will be in heaven with his bride. All that 1,000 years. And every year, for 1,000 times, they're going to have the Feast of Booths. And the Feast of Booths or Tabernacles was that God provided for them. Remember, this year, God provided for you. They would take all the fruits. It's like Halloween, like the fall festival, the Feast of Booth was. They made a temporary shelter and say, see, God has sheltered us out in the wilderness. And he provided food for us. And at that time, during this right here, when Israel left the land of Egypt, for 40 years they wandered in the land of wilderness because they were not believers. But God kept the shoes on their feet. He kept them shod with fresh shoes and clothes that did not wear out. I know a woman wasn't like that at all. For 40 years, no, no change of clothes. And then it says, if the family of Egypt does not go up or enter, then no rain will fall on them. If they, it will be a plague with which the Lord smites the nations who do not go up to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. This will be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations who not go up to celebrate the Feast of Booths. In that day there will be inscribed on the bells of the horses Kadesh HaKadoshim Holy to the Lord. And the cooking pots in the Lord's house will be like the bowls before the altar. And every cooking pot in Jerusalem and in Judah will be holy to the Lord of hosts. And all who sacrifice will come and take of them and boil in them. And there will no longer be a Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts in that day. No more unbelievers. No more false religionists. And then the Lord will come in that great day of battle at the thousand, end of that thousand years. And he will change the earth into a new heaven and new earth. However that is. Many people think he will burn it up and reform it, just like you do when you remind gold or silver. Some people say that he'll create a new one. I kind of think that he's going to take the old one and fix it. But there will be no man-made. Right here, probably the Sphinx and the pyramids will be on the earth, but over here into this new heaven and new earth, there will be no man-made objects in it. Not one man-made object will go into the eternal ages and on the new heaven and new earth. Not one man-made object will be there. Do you have any questions? Our Heavenly Father, we come to you and we thank you for your word. Thank you for all the blessings you give us. Father, I pray that this will go out and if one is out there that does not know you, that all these things are coming upon this earth for real and they have to face this if they don't believe in you. Five out of every six people are going to be killed. Two out of every three Jews are going to be killed. If you're a Jew out there listening to these words, repent and call upon the name of the Lord. You, Your people crucified the Lord God of heaven, the Lord God of glory. 
admit that. Fall down on your knees and ask the Lord to save your soul. Humble yourself before the Lord. If you're out there, any other na national ability, if you're Islam, if you are, if you are a Muslim, God will save you too. Jesus Christ died for all man's sins. Father, I pray that that you save these people that listen to you, that obey your voice. Thank you for this word. Let it go out and honor and glorify you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.